Yo, what's up, my people of the steeple? What's going on, my nation of the station? Tell me what's good, my Sunday school neighborhood, huh? It's your main man, Momo, or as you may know me, Moses. And today, I'm continuing my crazy story. Remember how everything started? I was raised in Egypt. I got in trouble. I met God at the burning bush. He spoke to me that I was supposed to go back and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen, would he? Uh-uh. And he wouldn't let us go. Well, last week we started talking about the plagues, right? And especially the final plague. The Lord told us how he, was, he would send his angel of destruction through the land. And he would be looking at the doorpost to see who had the blood of the lamb on it. And those with the blood on their household, they wouldn't be judged. But all those without the blood of the lamb, they lost their oldest child. They lost their oldest sheep. They lost their oldest mouse, the oldest cow, and even the oldest cockroach. And finally, I shared how that plague even struck the house of Pharaoh himself. And he finally told us to go and never come back. So y'all, we took off. I mean, we took oif. We rejoiced and we shouted our way out of Egypt. And things were looking great. I mean, we were making plans for our future. We was talking about the suburbs we was gonna build. And I asked the Lord for directions. But y'all, he didn't hook me up with Siri. Uh-uh. He didn't have nothing to do with Bixby. He didn't have no OK Googles, but he did send a cloud that hovered over us and it gave us the most amazing shade in that hot summer sun. But the best part about that cloud was that it moved with us. And wherever that cloud went, that's where we went. We followed the Lord's cloud GPS. It's in a cloud. We were laughing and we were joking and we were just having a good old time about the look on Pharaoh's face when we left, when all of a sudden, my brother A.A. Ron, he looked back and his face froze in fear and his hands started a shaking and a quaking and he got all of us to turn around and look and kids, you'll never guess what we saw. Kids, I saw a blinding light come off of Pharaoh's shiny bald head. There he was, he and all his army, and they were chasing after us. And we was a running, and they was a running too. And y'all, the faster we went, the faster we ran, and th the faster they ran. And we had women and children to care for. And we had old people to help, you know, we had to help them along the way. We can't leave old granny behind. We had babies to carry, we had animals to herd, and we knew that we couldn't get away. We're just not fast enough. We can't escape. Lord, what are we gonna do? So I told the people, look here, don't worry. God didn't bring us this far for us to go back to Egypt. But as much as I was preaching, old Momo was having a hard time even believing it for myself. Because when I looked back, I didn't want them to know. Momo was scared too. Kids, I was looking up for direction. And I'm not talking about, you know, look, I was committed to following the cloud and all, but when all of a sudden, I realized that God wasn't taking us the easy way. Even though that was the quicker route, you know, he, he could have he could have chosen the way that was close to the Philistines because that's the way that was close. But God had us heading directly towards the Red Sea. And I questioned it. I wondered about it. But I told myself, look, Look, man up, Momo. I'm going to go wherever that cloud goes. It's fine and all, but, but look, the same brother, A.A. Ron, you know, that same guy that, that he saw Pharaoh coming after us, all of a sudden he started murmuring. He started whispering and complaining. And he gathered a group of grumpy folks all together because grumpy folks know how to find each other. And, he, and all of them started hollering at me. They started complaining to the pastor. He said, Momo, he said, did God bring us all the way out here to just let us die? He said, you should have just left us alone. You should have let us stay slaves in Egypt. 
Because now, it's the Red Sea ahead of us. And Pharaoh behind us. And Momo, what are we gonna do now? I prayed, I'm telling you. I mean, like, I prayed. And I told the people, I said, fear not. I said, stand still. You see, the Lord allowed Pharaoh to chase us. God let that happen only because he wants to finally destroy Pharaoh for good. I look back one more time at Pharaoh as he was chasing us with all his might and all his bald head. I stretched that same rod out over the Red Sea. You know that rod that turned into a serpent that ate their, that ate their serpents? That, that same rod that we struck the water and it turned red as blood? The same rod that I smoked the dust and it became lice? Yeah, this one right here. I, I stretched it out over the Red Sea. And kids, a wind started blowing. And the sea began to part on the left and on the right. And look, I'm not even going to play. <laughs> I was surprised. I said, this is working. And God was like, yeah, keep doing it. And it worked. And y'all, we stepped out on where the water used to be, on dry ground. We walked through seeing the water on both sides of us. I'm telling y'all, it was like the coolest fish tank that you've ever been a part of. I'm like, whales were swimming on both sides of us, you know? And the kids, they were like, you know, running their hands through the walls of water. It was so awesome. And y'all, we walked through, not in muddy ground, we walked through on dry ground. I didn't even get my Jordans dirty, y'all. And the same brother, though, Hey, Aaron, what am I going to do with you? He turned around and he saw that even though God had parted the waters, Pharaoh is still chasing us into the sea. And as scared as we were, we turned to see the water begin to close in on Pharaoh and his army. We watched as the wheels of his chariots they got stuck in the mud. And we saw our enemies drown in the sea that God had just parted for us. Let me tell you kids, the enemy was able to come into the water with us, but he wasn't able to come out of the water behind us. We got on the other side and we started rejoicing. You just think we shouted when we first left Egypt. I'm telling y'all, we shout here on the other side of the Red Sea. We thanked God. We praised Him because as scary as it was, it was necessary so that we would never have to worry about our past again. When we saw Pharaoh wash away, we knew he was never going to come after us ever again. And kids on the other side of the sea, Looking back across the water at where we had come, we realized that returning to Egypt was never going to be an option for us. Our best days were not behind us. Our best days were ahead of us. All right, kids, look, my story's not done, but we got to take another break and we'll get back to it next week. But before we go, remember that we've got some main points. These are the main things that we need to make sure that you remember after listening to this story. Main point number one is this. When God chooses the hard route, it's going to be worth it. You realize it in scripture and even what I shared with you. Like I said, the Lord could have chosen the easy way. There was a route in the land of the Philistines that was near. It was close. It was easy. But God didn't choose the easy route. You know why? Because the easy route, we can fend for ourselves. If everything in our lives was easy, we wouldn't have a need for God. And so don't be confused whenever you look back across your story and you realize, wait a second, God, 
I've been going down the hard road. Guess what, kids? That's the road that God chooses for his people because hard roads have altars on them along the way. Places where you reach, you reach obstacles and it causes you to realize how badly you need God. You would have never realized it if he had chosen the easy road for you. The main point number two is this. If he brings you to it, he will bring you through it. And look, I don't care what all the A.A. Rons say. I don't care about all the people that have turned back and they see all the stuff that's coming after you. I don't care about all that. You've got to know that God would not bring you so far to leave you stranded where you are. You've got to know that if God has brought you to a situation, that must mean He plans on working in that situation. He wouldn't choose the path with the Red Sea if he didn't intend on parting the Red Sea. So kids, whenever you come against your own Red Sea, I want you to remember the words of Momo. If he brought you to it, he will bring you through it. Main point number three is this, just like Israel, we also must pass through the water and under the cloud. Did you catch it? Uh-huh. Remember, Scripture tells us we've got to be born again of the water that's passing through the water. That's baptism, right? In Jesus' name. And we have got to be born again of the Spirit. That's that cloud. That's, that is the Lord sending His presence to dwell not just over us, but in us. Kids, it, there's a reason why for us to get out of bondage, we had to go through the water and it wasn't the purple sea, it wasn't the blue sea, it wasn't the green sea. What, what did we go through? The red sea, because it's only the blood that can cleanse us and make us free from our bondage. Hallelujah. Main point number four is this. This is the last one. The enemy does not have the power to destroy you. Hear me whenever I tell you this, kids. The devil wants to appear as if he is able to take you out. But kids, if he could take you out, he would have already took you out by now. If the devil could kill you, you'd already be dead. So what that tells me is you still have a purpose on your life. And the enemy is not able to destroy you. Yeah, he can pursue you. Yeah, he can chase after you, but he can't destroy you. It's not enough just that you understand how powerful God is. You've got to also understand how weak the enemy is. He doesn't have the power to take you out. That leads us to our memory verse. And it's what I said to the people, okay? It's in Exodus chapter 14. In verse 13, and this is what it says. Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord. Kids, you won't see the salvation of the Lord if you're fearful. You won't see the salvation of the Lord if you're not willing to take a stand. There's a place in the Bible that says, my heart is fixed. That means I'm not going anywhere. And if you want to defeat your enemies, that's what you got to do. You got to put it in your heart that if God brought me this far, I'm probably going to be okay. Even though I'm facing real problems, I'm going to stand my foot down and I'm going to say, I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. Have whatever enemy chase after me you want, but I'm standing right here and I'm going to see God work on my behalf. Let's pray, kids. Lord, I love you. I thank you for these kids. And Lord, I know that there's all manner of situations going on in these kids' lives. Some of them have family problems. Some of them have problems at home. Some have problems at school. I don't know what their Pharaoh looks like, and I don't know what their Red Sea looks like. But I know, Lord, that we all face these tough situations. Help us, Lord, to realize you chose these tough situations so that you could prove yourself as strong and able to help your people. God, I thank you for our tough times because it's our tough times that you get to flex your muscle and show how strong and mighty you are. I pray, God, that you 
would stretch your arm over your people just like you did back in my day. And I pray that you would make a way where there seems to be no way, that you would part the waters and that you would, that you would come uh, with an answer for these children in their situation. In Jesus' name, somebody say it with me, amen. I'll see you next week for the next part of my story. Dudes, dudettes, did you see that, bros and bros, sis, sisses, bros, sis? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you don't know me, uh, it's your boy, a Aaron. Uh, you know, uh, I think my mom called me Aaron or something. Uh, it's kind of lame, so everybody just calls me a Aaron. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so there we were, you know, in the belly of a whale. We were swimming in a fighting with an angel. Oh wait, that, that, that's, that's something else. Anyways, we were a marching and a going and the walls of the water were like whoosh, And I was like, bro, and the fish were like And I was like, whoa, and they were like You know, and I, I, I wish I had a fishing pole. Anyways, uh, so we were going and a running and catching our breath and uh, you know what happened? I turned around and there was that old pharaoh with his big old bald shiny head and I was like yeah just like that and I was like oh no what are we gonna do and 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 a little Momo he was way up there and and I didn't know what to do and and just then a big old tuna just hit old A.A. Ron upside the head and it reminded me of a of a scripture that old uh, brother Momo, my brother, you know, little brother from my mother, uh, that he told me, and I want to share that with you. It goes a little something like this. Yeah, yeah. Fear not. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. Exodus 14, 13. Yeah. All right, kids, I need you to stand up. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And repeat after all, a, a Ron, all right. All right, dude, let's go. Uh, here we go. Fear not. Fear not. Stand firm. Stand firm. And see the salvation of the Lord. And see the salvation of the Lord. Exodus 14, 13. Exodus 14, 13. All right, all right, some of you did good, and uh, some of you sat back down. That's not okay, all right? Dudes. You have to do it with me. You have to believe, okay? Do I need to throw one of these tuna fish at you? Okay? All right, here we go. Be ready. Repeat after old A-Ray, A-Ron. Fear not. Fear not. Stand firm. Stand firm. And see the salvation of the Lord. And see the salvation of the Lord. Exodus 14, 13. Exodus 14, 13. Y'all are amazing, but uh, I got a grandma to help. Catch you later.